Hey, welcome back to the 55 Buick build. Now that we have the, the steering all figured out and installed, the next project is going to be the lower steering column mount and the power brake booster. So since uh, I removed the uh, factory stuff that was there, there's nothing really holding the, the bottom of the steering column other than the the rubber piece that's on the inside of the firewall there and that's not good enough so I need a, a a lower column mount to you know securely mount that the steering column so it can't move around so this is going to be um, three pieces to fill this in I need uh, two pieces on the bottom to hold the column because it has to be able to come apart to be removed so that if you ever had to take the steering column out you could and then the top will be a third piece that the uh, power brake booster will mount to. So I'm gonna make this all bolt up to the firewall using the factory uh, bolt holes that were there originally for the, the heating plenums. And I'll make it out of uh, eighth inch steel and it'll also be tied to the um, brake pedal mount which will be tied to the dash. So everything will all be tied together as far as the brakes, so there won't be any flex or anything like that. All right, so first part of this uh, deal is gonna be the lower half, and that will be the steering column mount. So let's get that done first, get some cardboard, and make it. All right, in the middle of making the firewall piece for the passenger side, easier side. Just have the air plenum from the passenger side, set it on a piece of metal, traced it, Drilling holes. Really uh, difficult, right? So that's what will be for the passenger side. Get that mounted and then move to All the right, driver's side. Right along. Clamp the plenum right to the uh, piece of metal and drill some pilot holes. And then uh, the plenum actually works as a drill guide to get the holes right. So take the clamps off. And we have a block off plate for the passenger side. So just clean up the holes, get that mounted. All right, there's the passenger side plate bolted into the firewall. Just use the factory bolts and uh, factory mounting points. And it is sealed up with butyl tape, which is this stuff here. You can buy it in rolls. It's used for setting windshields in uh, older cars like 60s 70s when they didn't have a rubber gasket you would set them in with this butyl tape works great for sealing out water it's good stuff and you can stretch it and make it thinner and use it for all kind of different stuff good stuff so that's in uh, next thing i'm going to do is make a small cover plate for the heater control unit and then we will move on to the driver's side all right, fastest cover ever. Took out the heater control valve and it had a metal cover over it. And all I had to do is cut a piece of rubber that I keep around for gaskets, uh, for like tail light housings and stuff. Thin rubber sheet, make a gasket, drill a couple holes and that'll be that. Okay, that was quick and dirty. That cover's on. All right, so now it's time to play over here. So a few things going on here have to make uh, the lower half panel, which will also be a mount for the lower steering column as well as uh, fill in that hole. And then the top section that we're gonna fill in the hole is also going to be the mount for the uh, power brake booster. I think this will be the last thing I ha can do or have to do with the engine still in the car. So we'll try to get this done um, engine I want in here for clearance checks on the uh, power brake booster to the coil packs which I'll set one on and uh, see what that looks like all right but first thing is going to be the bottom half of the uh, the hole and the steering column mount so using the factory parts as guides I have this piece here which was the vent and then I have the plenum that actually went over top of it and they fit together. Hard to do this with one hand, but 
you get the idea. The guy, the um, the vent section fit inside, so I can use these as templates. So that'll be for later. Concentrate on this first. So what I'm going to do is use the lower half of this as a guide, and then there was this piece here that bolted here to finish that off. But I'm going to use, um, like I said, the lower half of this to make a plate as a guide for the uh, mount. I don't know if this hole is going to be the same dimension. I'm going to double check how this fits on to the car. Okay, that dimension will be the same as factory. Why wouldn't it be? Well, because I forgot. There's also a rubber gasket that was on the car that fits between it and the, uh, the firewall there. So with that in place, that fills the, the hole. The hole looked a little big, but with that there, that will allow me to keep all the dimensions the same. All right, so start with the bottom piece. Let's get it made. I'm embarrassed to say that I spent over three hours making that setup there. All it is is a two-step plate and a two-and-a-quarter inch exhaust clamp. <laughs> but... It took me over three hours figuring out how I wanted to make it, cutting it up, modifying it, yada, yada. It's in. The two holes there uh, that have nothing in them, I'm going to weld bolts to the back of the upper plate. So there'll be studs, and then that'll uh, bolt down that upper half there to that. So now the column has a mount, and that lower plate can be removed and taken out of there and so you can remove the steering column if you had to and would not have to disturb the upper plate which is where the power brake booster is going to be so you don't want to have to mess with that so it works it took enough goofing around to make it but it works and i'll uh i have to take it back out again obviously to paint it in and whatever but uh, i'll get a better look at it when i have it out so next thing I have to do and I thought I would have been onto this a while ago is the obviously the power brake booster and the pedal all right I'll put that here okay so next thing to do here now that the plate is there is I need a brake pedal so I need to get under here and remove that uh, screen or cover or whatever was over the old vent that's got to go away and figure out, i got to move the rubber piece again to take that back off, and figure out where it's going to mount. This is the, the brake pedal I'm going to be using. This is actually out of a, <clears throat> like a 94, 95 uh, Caprice, because I have it, and I have the matching uh, power brake booster, so I'm going to use that. Uh, I've used them before, and they, they work real well. There's just about any car brake pedal will work whatever you can find but i'm going to use this one so let me get that apart and see what i got for room all right so i'm working on brake pedal placement it's been a little bit of time i removed my horsehair uh, padding there and i realized a couple things one i had to lose my neutral safety switch which, after I thought about it, it's not that big a deal because the, the shift quadrant is totally wrong. It's uh, park, neutral, drive, low, reverse. So it wouldn't have worked as a reverse switch anyway. So that'll be uh, something else to figure out at some point. And I had to remove my uh, contact for the horn, which I didn't know if it worked or not anyway. So I'm not so upset about that. But I'm at a... Uh, it's a tough spot. So, let's see if I put this up here. Something like that. See that? I'm doing this one hand. Um, get a mount up there, something like that. Basically, just so the, the pedal will clear the steering column when it swings. And height I can adjust. I can lengthen the brake pedal if I need to. But it's actually, I think, pretty close to where the factory one was if i could set this on the tripod i could show it but i can't in here it's not easy there so 
Ooh, light one out. With that figured out, or at least I think that's how it's going to be, I'll remove everything. See, I made some marks on the firewall. We're figuring out what's going to be what. Because it's not just going to be uh, bolted up to the firewall and go. Uh, this is the unit I'm using. Hold on a second here. So this is the the brake booster I'm going to use and uh, distribution block. Uh, it's actually a proportioning valve. This is for disc brake front and drums in the back. Uh, this is from a mid-90s B-body, same as the pedal. It's a match set. And common to a lot of these era cars, you see the master cylinder has a pretty steep angle on it. So I hate just bolting it to the firewall and, and, and seeing that uh, angle like that. So I'm going to do it like the factory did and make an angled mount on the firewall so that the booster will be angled up but the master cylinder will be level so that's another thing to take into account when figuring out how to make the mount because you got to have room and uh because of this thing here i made with the bottom removable plate um the bottom here is going to have to kick out this way toward the engine compartment where that angle is so it can go no lower than the this line here so that was pretty much my lowest point and that's uh about where it's going to be i'll cut that and uh fold it out and make the mount probably easier to see on the video when it's when it's done but these uh cars are tough because of the uh the space in there is as big a car as is it's kind of limited to getting around the the column I could make a, a curved or you know fabricate some kind of crazy brake pedal to go around the column but I try to just stick with factory stuff uh, extend it if it needed but you know just try to make it as easy as possible I'm not trying to do a, a million uh, hours of labor on this car so let me uh, get this plate here unbolted and start making the uh, mods for the booster mount all right, here's where we are. Made a pattern out of cardboard that will fit onto the back of the uh, prior brake booster. So that's my pattern. And obviously this is my plate that goes in the firewall. And here is my lower piece here. And this goes on top like that. So that mounts there, so I know that the bottom here, that's about as low as I can go, because I'm going to, uh, this square is actually going to tilt out. So I'm going to cut along this line, this line, and this line, and fold this out until I get the right angle where the uh, uh, brake booster is... Uh, angled correctly so that the master cylinder is level yeah, if I could talk today um, so that's the next thing I'm gonna do is plasma out these holes and cut this and get it angled all right starting to bend it a little bit so basically just trace the pattern cut out the bottom and the sides scored it on the top didn't cut all the way through and started lifting this up to uh, get it moving Next, we'll bolt it on the car, check position, and get the angle set, and then make sides and a bottom piece to make that hole again. Thank <laughs> you. 
So I'm going to bolt on the, the pedal from the inside and see what that looks like. The brake pedal is bolted up under there to the booster. So I got to take it all back apart. This looks good, but the, uh, the height looks good on the brake pedal. It's right under the steering column, pretty close to where the uh, original was, which works out real good. And I just got a, there's a brace I took out of the firewall or to the dash that's going to go up and I'm going to make a bracket to tie to the front of the pedal bracket right there. So get that in on the final assembly. We're going to take it all back apart now and weld up the front plate, get all that stuff reassembled and back in the car and then we'll come back in again. All right, there's the driver's side, uh, upper and lower mount all done. Uh, rattle can spray paint and uh, that'll work. So the bottom piece here, the mount is kicked out of the firewall at a little bit of an angle. Uh, I could put an angle finder on it and figure it out, but you know how it works. Just put the thing on there and get the master level. That's where it's going to be. And uh, the metal was heavy enough where it's not going to flop around. So once I bent it, it stayed there. Just took it apart, welded in pieces to keep it where it's at. Uh, one other thing, I did make a little bit of a clearance, a little bit of a dent here for the uh, portioning valve, which was leaking brake fluid on my inner fender well. So it is what it is. So, that's it. Now we'll bolt up the, uh, the power booster and the brake pedal. Brake pedal is bolted in. All right, brake pedal is bolted in. Instead, I'll have to make a, when I bolt in the bracket I remove from the dash, I'll, I'll tie the uh, brake pedal mount in at that spot there as well tie the uh, that bracket has to be tied into the uh, dashboard for support you can't just bolt it to the firewall that's not safe um, this is the wiring for the steering column I'll just get that out of the way for the moment but uh, brake pedal height is good uh, so, yeah, I still have the original one in here I have to get that out <laughs> I have to cut it out I'm sure but that has to go but the um, Brake pedal is at a nice spot. It's right under the steering column, which is perfect. And the height is good based on the original. And based on, ow, man, that hurt. This thing's sharp. Uh, based on my foot, not a problem. Sitting in the car, brake pedal's right there. You can heel toe it just like you should be able to. So that'll work. That's cool. And then out front, with the uh, angled mount, the master cylinder is now level, which is perfect. That's what we want. I want that level. Is it really necessary? I don't know. I've seen people just smack them in on the firewall and it's and it's crooked, but I don't I just don't like it So I want it level and then uh, side to side also level Sure it is It's level <laughs> It's good So there it is. That's cool So That is that so now the uh, power brake booster is mounted the pedal is mounted I'll just button up the uh, stuff under the uh, fire, under the uh, column there, put the rubber boot back on, and uh, that'll be that for that. Last piece of the puzzle. This is a um, piece of tube that's a brace for the dash that I had removed. It ties the upper dash into the cowl of the car, and I just put a, a 90 degree welded into it with a nut, and the uh, the brake pedal bracket will bolt right to that. So let me show you where that goes. Now I took my dash apart um, to make things easier for setting up the brake pedal. 
Uh, plus I had to do it anyway because I'm going to change the gauges and all that kind of stuff. So I took things apart just so I'd have more, more room to work. I don't know if that's really necessary or not. Uh, there's a bunch of dash parts up on the roof of the car. But this, uh, this brace here, inside here, you can see if I can get my phone straight. This is going to go like that. So it bolts to the... This is only good for guys with these cars, but just information. The brace bolts up there to the top of the dash. There's my bracket that will bolt to the brake mount. And then the bottom of that brace bolts up under here to the, the dash like that. And there you can see where that brace sits on top of the brake pedal mount. And that's it, bolt this in and this is finished. So what's next? Well, I have to think. We may be done, or I may be done, with everything that needs to be done with the engine in the car. It may be time to get the engine out, slap the, uh, the cam in it, change the oil pan, and uh, make a standalone wiring harness and start this engine up. I think I'm gonna start it on the stand. I'll have to see if I decide to, I will. Um, and also the transmission, I have to obviously put a torque converter in it and I'm considering taking it apart and uh, going through it. I've never rebuilt a turbo 400. It'll be uh, a first for me. So I don't know, it, it doesn't look that hard to do. <laughs> Everything's easy on the internet, right? Okay, we'll see. All right, well, thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next small project on this big project.